Welcome to a Fireside Chat with Zany Mystic. Today, my guest is Dr. Stephen Greer. <clears throat> Dr. Greer is the founder and director of the Disclosure Project. In addition to heading the Disclosure Project, he has also been supervising a worldwide search for alternative energy sources, such as zero-point devices, with the plan to identify and develop systems which will eliminate the need for fossil fuels. Dr. Greer released his third book in 2006, Hidden Truth, Forbidden Knowledge, in which he relates his own ex personal experiences with extraterrestrials and the unfolding of cosmic awareness since his childhood. <clears throat> at an early age, he had a UFO sighting, and at 17, he experienced an amazing near-death experience and went on to unravel the secret cabal that is currently running most of the projects on the world, uh, including the illegal transnational energy and UFO-related projects. On May 9, 2001, as director of the Disclosure Project, Dr. Greer presided over the Disclosure Project press conference from the National Press Club in Washington, D.C. Over 20 military, government, intelligence, and corporate witnesses presented compelling testimony regarding the existence of extraterrestrial life forms visiting the planet and the reverse engineering of the energy and propulsion systems of these craft. So let's explore what's transpired since the press conference and where Disclosure stands today by welcoming Dr. Greer to the show now. Hi, Stephen. How are you? I'm doing fine. Thank you. Glad to be here. <laughs> Good. I'm glad to have you. Uh, I've been following your work for a long time. I read your book about five years ago, and I'll have to tell you it was one of the most uh, shocking and uh, eye-opening books that I've read to date. Uh -huh. And I highly recommend it to everybody uh, because it's really vital information to, to find out about. Well, thank you. Um, you're doing a lot of uh, really incredible work on the planet and on many levels. So I know that uh, a lot of people are going to want to know, first of all, where uh, to have an update on the Disclosure Project, where it's progressed and where it might be today. Well, you know, we're really focused in three major areas. The first is, uh, and the original project, is the Center for the Study of Extraterrestrial Intelligence, CSETI, and CSETI.org is the website for that. Uh, and that is about training people using uh, Vedic knowledge of higher states of consciousness and remote viewing to establish contact, interplanetary uh, peaceful contact, with these civilizations which we know are visiting the Earth. Um, we think this is very important because the governments of the world have dropped the ball on that. The only response that we've shown these uh, interstellar civilizations is military, and that's an enormous <clears throat> mistake that started in the World War II period. So that's one project. Now, from that, and I have to say, to give you a really quick thumbnail sketch of this, by 1993, we had succeeded in doing that. And if people, this, this last book that came out in, in, in the past year called Contact, Kent Down the Transformation, has a DVD that comes with it. Um, and, <coughs> excuse me, that um, is at disclosureproject.org. You can get these books. That one shows uh, our team making direct contact with these interstellar civilizations, vector them into sight, having craft actually materialize near us. Uh, and more recently, in the past year, an extraterrestrial ambassador that materialized about three feet from our circle, which we photographed. Wow. Um, now, what, 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 what this means is, and, and what this said to me beginning in 91 and 92 and 93, was that these civilizations are eager to have peaceful contact if people understand the transdimensional aspects of what that implies. Because if you're going faster than the speed of light, you're going to have to cross into these other dimensions where consciousness and thought, what used to be relegated to the realm of metaphysics and the mystic, is actually the science of these civilizations. Mm -hmm. So luckily, before I became a trauma doctor, emergency doctor, I was a student of the, the Vedas and Sanskrit mm -hmm. and, and meditation and had a lot of these experiences so I could understand the context of the conscious living universe and then put that into a paradigm for making contact. But once these contact events started happening, for example, we were in Florida in 1992, and we had four extraterrestrial vehicles appear uh, within a few hundred feet of us, and this was filmed by about uh, five different video cameras and photographers on the front page of the Pensacola paper the next day. Mm. Um, 
this DVD that is with this new book, uh, Contact Countdown to Transformation, shows that footage. Now, what's interesting is that I was then approached by the head of Army Intelligence and some other people associated with the intelligence community who basically said, uh, what the hell are you doing? Because <laughs> they knew that I was stepping outside their control boundaries because I right. discovered, uh, as this one man said, I discovered the Rosetta Stone of interstellar communication, which is using thought, consciousness, coherent thought. There's a whole program that we've developed around that. That's, it's actually very scientific, but it has a great deal to do with consciousness. Mm. So he, you know, it, it, he was actually sort of threatening me, and I basically said, "Bug off!" You know, you guys are, are, are you know, petro Nazis, and, and get out of my face. <laughs> right. And you know, so I'm an emergency doctor, so I don't intimidate that easily. Believe me. And so I'm going. Well, look. Right. Uh, you know, but also what came to, to, to light was that there were people who approached me from the Clinton administration who said, look, we think it is time for this information to come out, but the president and the CIA director don't have access. Now, this was shocking to me, and, and, uh, and I thought initially it was a, a prevarication to try to just pick my brain. Uh, but anyway, I was invited, my wife and I were invited to come up to Washington that first year that Clinton was president, and... Uh, meet with the, the CIA director, uh, R. James Woolsey, for about three hours. And um, Mr. Woolsey, genuinely being the CIA director, you know, the average person out there would think, oh, well, you know, they know about anything going on that's secret. He co totally had been blocked access to these projects. Uh, and this really was something that I was very disturbed to learn. It was true. Uh, the President of the United States was also denied control and access over these projects. So there's this sort of parallel secret government that we uncovered that operates quite outside of the chain of command of the Constitution. So that was the birth of the Disclosure Project. I'm trying to give you a little bit of a history here. And so uh, between <laughs> the early 90s and 2001, I began to go around and identify uh, people who had been in these projects worked on the extraterrestrial devices that we had shot down. Uh, Roswell, by the way, was a shooting down using an electromagnetic weapon system. It wasn't a crash mm -hmm. in the normal sense. And people who had personal uh, documents or uh, gun camera footage, anything that was dispositive. We put all that together, and that was then launched in 2001. Now, that press conference was actually seen by about a billion people worldwide. Wow. Um, but the, the big media like CNN and other entities that began to cover it were then contacted by people in the intelligence community and told, don't pursue this and don't cover it anymore. So then we began to do other things to get the information out through the Internet and through other governments. For example, having been working a lot with people in the French government, we got the French uh, government to release uh, over uh, 100,000 pages of their secret documents from their space agency in Japan. Mm. And uh, recently, we, the, the New Zealand government has released documents. The Mexican government has. The uh, Danish government has. Uh, even the United Kingdom has begun to release a few of their uh, mm. documents, although they're still very much hand in glove with America. Right. And so what that then led to was that I began to meet people who have actually worked on the energy and propulsion systems that are behind these mysterious objects that people have seen. And they, everyone knows they're not normal aerodynamic aircraft. They're not using jets and rockets and things oh, of this right. sort. <laughs> so they're using a very advanced uh, trans-dimensional physics, hyper-dimensional physics, and we have people now on our team who've actually worked on those physics. And so as a consequence of that, we started the orionproject.org, which is a, an energy research entity. It's a not-for-profit that we put together a couple years ago to uh, educate people on that because we're convinced that the heart of the secrecy, although there's a lot of reasons for the secrecy, mm. uh, inertia for one, bureaucratic inertia, uh, you know, the scandal of all this information coming out. Um, mm -hmm. But also, there are some religious entities that don't want this information out. Um, obviously, if you think the world is 6,000 years old and we rode dinosaurs, <laughs> well, I mean, there's a museum in Kentucky that shows this where, you know, these kind of religious nuts um, yeah. believe that. And I mean, if I'm offending anyone, too bad. Right, right. Grow up and read a little science. Right. But the point is, is that, what happened is that we realized that the really heart of it was a macroeconomic system that we were challenging through disclosure that was keeping the secret because if this information is known, 
we will not need oil, gas, coal, nuclear power, centralized utilities, internal combustion engines, jet engines, rockets, all of it's obsolete and has been obsolete for at least 50 years. Mm -hmm. So this is the largest macroeconomic and technological revolution and transformation in human history. And the the stakeholders, the people who own these multi-trillion dollar aspects of the economy, Mm -hmm. don't want it out. So the president and the CIA director and and people I've met with on the Senate Intelligence Committee and Foreign Relations Committee of the Senate, the U.N. Secretary General, these are people who are just brushed aside. And most average people can't imagine that you could be the president of the United States or the uh, head of intelligence for the Joint Chiefs of Staff as an admiral that I briefed. Um, and, and they would be completely blocked from these above top secret super compartmentalized programs. But that is really how the world works and, and, uh, or doesn't work. And I tell people right. that, you know, this is so dysfunctional. And my mom's uh, family, Interesting. It was an interesting family. My mom's uh, older brother was the guy who was the senior project engineer that designed the lunar module that put Neil Armstrong on the moon. And uh, her her ancestors way back were some of the original founders of the United States. And we're actually we were the original POWs with the British. I always joke with my British friends. But the the the, the point is is that the, there's been a complete subversion of the rule of law and the Constitution by these super secret entities that have basically done what Eisenhower warned us they were doing, and that is when he said, beware the military-industrial complex because it's going to get out of control and it's going to completely subvert our way of life and our freedoms and our democracy. And, And this is what Eisenhower said as he was leaving office in January of 1961 and just mm. before Jack Kennedy took office. So I think that what people have to understand is that the whole last half of the 20th century, if not before, has been hijacked by yeah. a cabal of folks who have taken this issue and that it is run and managed in a very illegal, unconstitutional, I, I call it the world's largest organized crime syndicate mm-hmm. um, or mafia, Mm-hmm. And it's a tragedy because what's being withheld from the planet is not only the fact that we're not alone and mm-hmm. that we, we, we should be moving out, out into space as a peaceful uh, interstellar people, mm-hmm. but also that the means for uh, fixing climate change and global warming and world poverty have been completely withheld from the people. Imagine if every village in Africa could have a little device that would be the size of your heat pump that would put out enough power to run that village with free electricity for refrigeration, electrification, uh, pumping water, uh, sanitation. Uh, you know, and once you put that thing in, they would have it. So this is the sort of technology that we know exists. We have people who've worked on them and not all of it came from studying ET spacecraft. A lot of these things were beginning to be discovered uh, 100 years ago by uh, people like Nikola Tesla and then mm-hmm. and Maxwell and Faraday and others. The problem is, is that the same uh, cabal of folks who, who who suppress that information then want to also suppress the UFO and ET information because once they discovered uh, how elegant the physics is. Mm. that is behind these uh, UFOs and how they operate, they said, boy, we do not want this out because whether it's the 40s or the, or today or whether it's 1908, these very large industrialized powers don't want that to happen. And you, people have to remember that today there are two or 300 uh, uh, families and corporations that have over half of the net worth of the world in their control. So, oh, yeah. With it, there's seven billion people, but these two or three hundred people and individuals, and so we're basically all slaves on a plantation, as it were. And these people right. like being the slave masters. That's in right. fact, I, I call them. I have an acronym for them. That, that I call them Motus, masters of the universe. Um, and these Motus are very addicted to this level of power and control. And yeah. this subject coming out is something that they don't have not wanted to have happen. Well, yes, and uh, obviously they're doing everything possible to stop it, um, uh, including murdering whoever gets in the way. Uh, You had some experiences, according to your book, that were quite unpleasant as a result of your research as well. Um, But then, as you said, there's uh, black operations, and then there are black operations within those, and uh, there there are rogue operations and so on and so forth. So... um, I watched your interview with William Pollock, who refers to these uh, people as the four horsemen. Right. <clears throat> so 
Uh, what? Obviously, we can't continue on like this because the planet is being raped and pillaged, and basically, it, it, it's like a scorched earth policy. Um, what is? What can we do? I mean, obviously, you're working on solutions. Um, well, there's a lot we can do, and each individual can do more than they realize. For example, okay. we have trained um, a couple thousand people now to uh, learn how to become ambassadors to the universe is what we mm-hmm. call it. And people can go to CSETI.org and see we're going to be doing something in Orange County, California oh. um, in uh, October uh, uh, this, I mean, I'm sorry, this, uh, in February, in uh, the 18th, 19th, and 20th in Orange County, and uh, where I'm going to be doing a three-day and three-night thing. We're going to go out into the stars together and actually train people to do this, and we're going to be doing another one in Florida uh, on an island uh, called Marco Island in the Gulf of Mexico uh, from March 6th to 12th. And what we do with these is that we actually teach people the meditation techniques, the remote viewing capabilities, the use of high-powered lasers and electromagnetic signaling that we send out into space hmm. um, to vector these craft in or these beams in and make peaceful contact. Now, it's all predicated on the idea that people are doing this not for uh, the normal prosaic reasons that the military have, which has been to shoot them down, they study the technology and uh, what have you, it's, it's for peaceful purposes of interplanetary communication and relations. So that's that's the purpose behind it. Um, and there has to be sort of a, a clear intent or the ETs don't show up, frankly. I mean, if your intention is not clear, um, and I hate to use the word pure-hearted, it gets overused, but a pure-hearted, clear purpose, they're not going to come. But I think that if people are in that space uh, and understand transdimensional reality and the fact that uh, you know, you can do it. So everyone can do this. And we have had housewives from um, Denmark uh, get this training program now that we put together. It's on the, our website at disclosureproject.org. And listened to the meditation tapes, practiced it, gone out with a couple people, and had contact happen. So this is a, becoming a global phenomenon. So I tell people, you don't have to wait for Hillary Clinton. Uh, the Secretary of State to do this because I don't think that's going to happen soon. We the people can become a force of uh, what, what Sheldrick has called this morphogenic field uh, of consciousness change and do it ourselves. That's one thing everyone can do. The other thing everyone can do is they can go to DisclosureProject.org. We have there, uh, you know, a, a four-hour and a two-hour DVD that, that have all these top-secret witnesses' testimony on it. There's a book that's almost 600 pages long that has the top secret documents and their testimonies in it. This, these can be provided. People can network and provide that to everyone they know in their circle and educate them on the subject. And then the third thing people can do is help support the OrionProject.org, where what, we, what has happened is that in the last few months, we have acquired a multi-thousand page disc um, CD that have uh, confiscated secret patents, plans, and information on these energy devices that have come to us from a very solid intelligence source. Oh, right. And we have that in safe storage and a number of... But what we want to do is build an R&D facility, research and development laboratory here near mm-hmm. the University of Virginia um, uh, in the Blue Ridge Mountains of Virginia and staff it with the, these brilliant scientists that we have identified over the last uh, 20 years who know this science and put them under one roof and have them build these systems and basically bring them out uh, without any regard to uh, going through the process of the government bureaucracy or Lockheed right. Martin or Northrop. Because here's the problem. A lot of people think, well, the president can issue an executive order and release these things. But that's not true because he doesn't control the levers of power on this. Uh, even Rumsfeld. Bush's Secretary of Defense said that there was two or three trillion dollars missing out of the Department of Defense budget over the last few decades. Yeah. And this is, you know, this was from a conservative Republican. He said that around 9/11. It was either the day before or day after 9/11. Yes, yes, um, I remember that. And this is a matter of the public record. And people thought, what in the hell is he talking about? Did he mean billion? And I said, no, no he meant what he said, trillion. And that money is going, it's the, it's the black budget of the United States. So this thing is so screwed up at this point that people can do that. So we have to find, we have about a, it's a $5.7 million uh, a grant proposal for a two-year R&D effort, which is 
to give you a perspective, when we built the stray dog and cat shelter here in my county, we raised mm-hmm. $6 million for that. I'm telling people we need to be able to raise these funds, get this facility outfitted with the top-notch electronic equipment, put these brilliant physicists and engineers uh, working full-time, which they have to be paid. I mean, I've done this without being paid and left my medical career, but most people aren't in a position to do that. Thank God right. I have been. But the point is is that that's what needs to happen, and everyone can network to make that happen because who isn't concerned about the environment and climate change and global war- warming and world poverty? So we have to find a few people um, to put the funding together for that. And when we do, I predict that within – six to 18 months, we're going to have an operational device that would absolutely be a revolution in energy and the environment. Wow. So that's the other thing everyone can do. So, uh, yeah, in fact, if you go to the orionproject.org, there are a large number of research papers and documents there that, uh, that describe this type of technology and even the history of it going all the way back to the late 1800s. Uh, a lot of people don't realize that people like T. Townsend Brown we're, we're using high voltage uh, resonant uh, magnetic field devices to levitate things back in the 1920s. Wow! And this is in the open literature. But see, people don't talk. You don't go to, when you go to MIT. You don't learn about this physics. It's all right. left out of the textbooks. But it's a matter of historical fact. These are not speculative rumors or urban myths. These are things we can absolutely prove. Now, fast forward 80 years. And our group now has acquired all this other new information. So there's no question that we could do this, but we're going to have to have a lot of people help us put both the funding together and also educate the public about it. Because the public, you know, CNN is not going to go forward uh, or NBC, you know, that's owned by General Electric or any of these other right. entities, uh, you know, or, or Universal Studios that's 81% owned by General Electric, all these big defense contractors and energy companies call the shots of the mainstream media. Right. And this is why shows like yours are so important, because the people can find out the truth about these things, but then they need to not just learn about it, they need to take action. And yeah. they can take action not only as ambassadors to the universe and people who promote disclosure, but they can network and find the means for us to put this team together. Uh, and basically what's lacking right now is the funding to be, I can't, I don't have, you know, $5.7 million to open this facility, but there are people out there who I think do, who if they could be educated on the promise of these technologies, because look, I mean, we're putting literally hundreds of billions of dollars into global warming research and new energy things, but it's mostly, you know, circa 1800s uh, windmills. Oh, and yeah, so and, so, and solar things, you know, and solar is great, but to make my house a, a self-sufficient solar house is one hundred and twenty-five thousand dollars. Oh yeah, expense. that's ridiculous. It's a ridiculous. The average person can never afford that. So, and, and looking way into the future, they're talking maybe we'll get two or three or five percent of our energy from those sort of things. We that's not enough. I mean, no, we're, we're you know with seven billion people, and you know, you look at China and India. You know, with the two, those two countries have two and a half billion people and they're industrializing at 10 and 15 percent a year. They're going to gobble up all the existing oil and coal and they're burning the stuff without any scrubbers or environmental controls. That's why most of the greenhouse gases now are coming out of China more so than America. So we cannot live on this planet going into the next 10, 20, 30, 40 years using that old energy paradigm that's from the 1800s, from the dawn of the Industrial Revolution. So this is something we all can work on, and I'm convinced that if we would gather our resources and do the networking, we could make this a reality very quickly. Well, I'm with you on that one, and, you know, we're really at the point where if we don't make those changes soon, uh, we're going to miss the boat. Um, And all of this is really tied into our spiritual evolution and development as well, isn't it? Well, I think the secrecy and and the disclosure is in itself a spiritual process because mm-hmm. I think secrecy is a sign of of fear and control and emptiness. And yeah. uh, disclosing the truth about these things is, in fact, a spiritual process. And moreover, the manifesting not only the vision that's compassionate, but the courage to do these things against the interest of these corrupt influences mm-hmm. is in mm-hmm. itself 
I call it the Shambhala warrior, the spirit warrior in all of us that has to rise to the surface. It, it isn't enough to sit in a cave and meditate anymore. Right. We have to, and I did that. I mean, I had my period where I spent, you know, eight hours a day in meditation learning the Vedas and Sanskrit and all of that. And right. that's what I teach people when they come to these retreats with us. But I think we have to also step out in the world and say, we're going to be the spiritually awakened spirit warriors to stand up to these corrupt influences and not fight them per se in the old sense of the word, but to create something new that basically heals this problem. Mm-hmm. And there's no, you don't have to get into sort of a jujitsu with these guys because right. my view of it is that let them be, they're going to implode under their own rotten corruption, which is what yeah. I'm observing. But yeah. we have to find the way to create what's going to take the place of this old order that's corrupting, uh, collapsing all around us. I mean, you know, our, our economic system is collapsing. You know, most mainline organized religions are imploding. I mean, look at the scandals at the Vatican. Uh, we're, the, the energy systems we're using are creaky and old. Even the electric grid we have oh, is yeah. decades old and is collapsing, and it yeah. takes nothing to take it down, a brownout or, oh, you know. Yeah. Uh, so all of these all of these things are, are all kind of collapsing under their own Wait, And so what we have to do is be aware of that, but say, okay, what are we going to put in its place? And I tell people we need to put in its place a whole new vision of how we're going to live on this planet uh, with new science and technology, a new consciousness, universal peace, where we go out into space, not with Star Wars weapons, but making peaceful contact with these interstellar visitors. And... Uh, developing the means so that we have a, you know, a thousands of years of abundance and sustainable enlightenment and progress on this planet. This is something we absolutely can do, and that's the big task of the current moment. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow, well said, well said. Um, you mentioned China earlier and uh, the growth there. I heard a rumor on the Internet that uh, China has some kind of free energy device that they'll be releasing at some kind of strategic moment. Do you know anything about that? Well, you know, I, I hear this about once uh, every week or two that <laughs> so-and-so has this. I believe it when I see it. Right, right, um, there, right. There's a wonderful saying, you know, when I lived, when I lived in uh, the Middle East, there was a saying the bitter one had, trust in God but tie your camel. Right. So, uh, you know, <laughs> I think that what we have to do is say, you know, here's the problem with the Internet and, and these sort of rumors. It creates passivity in people. Yeah, yeah, You know, people sit at their computer screens and their Blackberries and their iPhones and they think they're living in reality. Yeah. And they're mistaking virtual reality for reality. And, you know, memo to all the people out there who think they're so high tech, your fiber optic systems and your computers and all those servers are running off a coal-fired power grid from circa 1850. <laughs> so wake up and smell the coffee. Steve really? Jobs, okay, uh, Microsoft, Bill Gates, you're, you're running your systems off a 1800s energy paradigm. So we think we're high tech, yeah, and we yeah. think that all this stuff that's on the internet it supplants for action. And one of the problems is that these sorts of pronouncements and prognostications build in a sort of passivity where people say, "Oh well, China's going to release this soon. We don't need to do anything." And right, which right. I say horse feathers because uh-huh. I've been hearing this for, for a couple of decades uh-huh. that there's some imminent release and they're going to do this. Well, I think those things are, are put out there so that people won't take the bull by the horns yeah. and do it themselves. You know, because before I did the, you know, when we did the, the Disclosure Project, and if you go to disclosureproject.org, you can actually see the links to that National Press Club event you referred to, and mm-hmm. people can view it for free online. I mean, it's been viewed by literally millions of people around the world. It was interesting because I, on the run-up to that, I kept having people come to me and say, well, you know, the government's going to do this. The government's going to do it. You don't need to do it. They were just trying to have me not do it. And I, you see what I'm saying? So yeah, it's always someone else will do it. And, you know, it's I'll gladly pay you Tuesday for a hamburger today. And what I would say to people is take responsibility for the world and yourself. Don't wait for someone else to do it because it's this passivity that television and the, I mean the internet can be a wonderful thing but the passivity that's been built into our lives where we mistake uh, passively virtual reality for real relationships and real action and yeah. what have you yeah. really is injurious and I tell people 
They need to get their heads out of their uh, internet uh, computers and smart bear, uh, blackberries and smartphones and actually do something. Right. Because you know, and, and this is something people are not doing anymore. They're not actually coming together and doing anything because yeah. it's easy to just sit on your fat ass. Excuse my French, and <laughs> and you know, sit at a keyboard and sort yeah. of live live vicariously through the internet. That's so, I, and I'm not a luddite at all. I think the internet's a wonderful thing. However, people need to not mistake these rumors and the things that they see on the internet for actually accomplishing something. And right. that's what we need to do. We need to go out under the stars together at night, be in this state of higher awareness, make contact, and bypass the embargo. Uh, that has been created by this secret government. We need to come together and build up a laboratory with these brilliant scientists and all this information we've gathered over two decades and come out with these technologies ourselves. We need to go and continue to have disclosure, and uh, you recently referred to this Palak interview. You know, there are a lot of people who keep coming forward, and there are more who can. I say that anyone who has worked in an official capacity in any government of the world Dealing with this issue, they should come forward with the documents or their testimony and be a truth teller. Yeah. And people say, well, you know, isn't that illegal? And I tell people, no. The, what WikiLeaks did maybe had been illegal because they were leaking properly classified information. What we're exposing are illegal operations which yeah. have no protection under the rule of law. And I want to make a point here is that if you, and I'm the only person who could go to court and testify under oath to this, I have personally briefed a sitting CIA director, the head of intelligence with the Joint Chiefs of Staff, members of the Senate Intelligence Committee, Foreign Relations Committee, chairman of the Con Congressional Oversight Committees. These people, every one of them, have been denied access to these projects. Therefore, a priori, and by definition, these projects are illegal, and therefore, if they're illegal, they cannot cite the National Security Act. That's very different from a classified communication between Hillary Clinton and the Prime Minister of Great Britain. You see what I'm saying? So I, the things we're dealing with aren't, you know, just sort of the gossip that goes, that, that goes back and forth amongst diplomats that got leaked, or, you know, something from the Army saying that, you know, we killed a village in Iraq and what have you, and bombed it by accident. I mean, this is all stuff people know anyway. There's really no revelations there. Mm -hmm. what, what I think is important to understand is that we need more and more people to come forward, and there are people listening right now who have been in these secret projects who haven't come forward who need to. And, so, and they need to come forward with whatever they have, whether it be physical evidence, documents, or their testimony. And the reason for that is that that process of telling the truth on this is very, very, very important because we've got to put the rule of law back in charge and the chain of command back in charge because if we don't, what has happened to civilization? The basis of civilization is the rule of law. If you subvert it, Mm -hmm. and you're subverting it in a massive way on something this important, then you really are slipping into tyranny, a secret tyranny, although it's most people don't even know it exists. It's like a covert Fourth Reich. Uh, and, and I think that people have to understand that it is, it is an act of patriotism, in the truest sense of the word, it, it, for you to do this and to come forward. And all the men and women who have worked with me with DisclosureProject.org uh, feel that way, that they were really doing, once they understood what was at stake, they were doing their civic duty to tell the truth to the public because they came to realize that the projects that they were involved with were themselves illegal operations. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, would you say that uh, due to the technology that's been back engineered and <clears throat> that has been secreted away by the various corporations, that uh, some of the UFOs that people are seeing today are actually our own? Oh, yes. I think a majority of the ones that are fully materialized in linear space-time mm -hmm. uh, are, in fact, made by a consortium of companies that include Lockheed Martin, uh, my uncle's old company, Northrop Grumman, uh, SAIC, MITRE Corporation, uh, and, a, and a few others. Um, and, yes, there are classified projects. They have been studying these uh, since, uh, well, really the 20s and 30s. Mm -hmm. um, and everyone knows that, of course, the Werner von Braun and the Schomburger uh, device uh, from, from uh, Hitler's Nazi era, they were working on these anti-gravity lifter 
type things all the way back in the 30s and 40s. And so uh, some of the things that are seen are, in fact, man-made uh, uh, alien reproduction vehicles or uh, anti-gravity vehicles. Uh, and these do exist. We know the bases where they're kept uh, in Utah and in Nevada and in the high desert of California out near Palmdale and, and uh, Edwards Air Force Base and in Australia uh, near uh, Pine Gap and these areas. Um, but, yes, so certainly those do exist. So what you have are you have two different phenomena going on. You have something that looks like a UFO that's man-made, right. and then you have the actual extraterrestrial vehicles, which are from interstellar origins. And distinguishing between the two is 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 non-trivial because most people don't even know there are two different phenomena. And part of the danger in this is, is the potential for a false flag operation where this uh, secretive, uh, cl- these super secret projects that aren't under the control of the president or the Congress mm. could stage an alien attack mm. using these things. Uh, and most of the people of the world would be completely deceived by it, including most of the people at the Pentagon I know who are, who are generals and admirals. So I think that what people have to understand is that this secrecy uh, can hide a lot of nefarious little plots. It's sort of like a cosmic 9-11 or a cosmic uh, uh, Gulf of Tonkin sort of situation where you could, you, you could hoax this kind of a threat and most people would be deceived by it, which is why it's important for people to come forward who've not only dealt with the actual extraterrestrial uh, presence and uh, craft, but who have worked on these so-called uh, alien reproduction vehicles. And we do have people in our Disclosure Project. Um, in fact, some of their testimony is at DisclosureProject.org who've worked on that. Uh, in the book, we actually have the schematic of uh, one of these uh, earlier uh, alien reproduction vehicles that began to be operational in the late 50s and early 60s. Uh, and a lot of people, in fact, I know more than one scientist uh, who have actually built these systems, worked on them. Uh, I have personally interviewed people who have piloted them as well, and these are humans. And so, yes, th- these do exist, and, and I think uh, you have to understand that as well as the fact that there's actual interstellar civilizations um, now, I have to tell you that most of the information out on the UFO subject is, is, is disinformation designed to scare the hell out of people. And I have found out that the intelligence community tied into the secrecy on the subject have actually funded and put information out there about some threat from outer space because they want to eventually get more trillions of dollars from the world economy and grow the military-industrial complex, as I oh, yeah. called it, by having another enemy. Because right now, you know, look, we're spending $100 billion a year to chase, uh, what, you know, 60 or 70 al-Qaeda members in Afghanistan. <laughs> they're not there. They're in Yemen, and they're in Ethiopia, and they're everywhere right. else. So, so, you know, they have to create another boogeyman. Right, and right. the big the big boogeyman, Werner von Braun, who invented the rocket, uh, said to, to his uh, spokeswoman for the last, four or five years of his life, who's one of our witnesses, Dr. Carol Rosen, that in fact this was the agenda all along, that when this thing went black and illegal in the 50s, that they were planning to eventually roll out a hoaxed alien threat. And so that's when they started using these alien reproduction vehicles that are man-made mm-hmm. and these little gray creatures that yes. we've been growing. Actually, what's interesting is a lot of the, you see Whitley Strieber's book and all that, those creatures we've been manufacturing in facilities uh, and I have multiple independent corroborating scientists who work in these facilities on these creatures, and they look like an ET, but they're yeah, man-made. Yeah. So these things, along with electronic warfare systems and some chemical systems, and mind control, and what have you, have been right. used to hoax things like mutilations and abductions and all kinds of scary stuff. What, what's interesting about it is that they can do a few of those, and then it takes on a mythological power because people love to be afraid. Yeah. And people yeah. like to be manipulated through fear because we're conditioned to do that. That's right. And and I think and I think that this this is something. It's like it's like the in vogue song, "Free Your Mind." You know, we got to free our minds from this nonsense because that's right. most of the information that's out there, I discovered. I didn't know this initially, but once I drilled deep into this, I actually yeah. began to meet with people who had run uh, these abduction squads. And they weren't aliens. They were they were humans masquerading. And they, I even have a document that I provided in the briefing I put together for President Obama that describes the stagecraft that's used uh-huh. to hoax yeah. these things. So 
it's it's very very well thought through and sophisticated. And what people have to understand is that if there were experiments with transdimensional anti gravity technologies from the 20s, 30s, and 40s. Imagine where we are by the 70s, 80s, 90s, and 2010 and 2011 in terms of being able to simulate things that look ET but aren't. Yep. And so you have two competing phenomena here that people are mixing up and commingling. Yep. And this, this is this is where the real danger is because there's not discernment. That confusion has caused people to jump to all these conspiracy theories that there, there's some sort of a, an alien invasion or there are the good aliens and the bad aliens and there's some yeah. sort of end of the world cosmic battle happening. Well, this is exactly what the right wing kooks, right. Uh, you know, with the right. with the Opus Dei group or or Scientology right. or the Mormons or uh, some other religious group would want you to believe, isn't they it? When they 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 want you to believe in this Armageddon eschatological right. scenario. That's and right. by the way, that happens to fit hand in glove with what the military industrial war profiteers want yep, yep. because they would benefit by uniting the world around some global military junta That's to exactly. spend instead of a trillion a year two or three or four trillion dollars a year on Star Wars. That's so right. these are this is very manipulative and people need to sort of wake up and, and snap out of that mindset and uh, now, of course, I have not endeared myself to people in the UFO retail subculture who make millions of dollars through movies and books, you know, purveying alien invasion, Independence Day type scenarios. But, right. you know, I point out to people, it's one thing to take a flight of fancy in a science fiction movie. It's another thing when people start standing up and saying, uh, like Stephen Hawking did this past oh, year, yeah. Where he says, "Oh, we can't make contact with ETs because they're going to be marauding space aliens that are going to invade us and conquer us." I couldn't oh, well, believe that. Hearing that, well, how stupid! And I was interview I was interviewed out of a program out of out of out of England, and the guy. I, I actually said this. I said, "I can't imagine a man of his intelligence." Yeah, saying yeah. something that completely uninformed. Because let's step back a minute. Yeah, if you have a if you have the means to travel faster than the speed of light amongst different star systems or even galaxies. Yeah. Which means that you could find a, a, a thousand worlds like Earth that don't yet have intelligent life on them. What is there on Earth that is here that they need? This is silly. This is yeah. utter silly. There's no need for them to come. And moreover, if you understand the physics of transdimensional sciences, you can materialize out of the elemental so-called zero-point energy field Anything you want, whether it be ruby, golds, plants, genetic material, what have you, you can you can do that. You, in other words, you reach the point of scientific capability. We're sort of like in Star Trek, where they have the thing where if you want a meal, it just sort of materializes it. This is not science fiction. This has actually been done in classified projects that I know of. So if you're an interstellar civilization, they're coming all the way to Earth for what? You know, so and so's egg and my sperm. Please don't don't flatter yourself. You know this is this is delusional nonsense. So you know for for someone like Stephen Hawkins to say, and recently there's there was a, a another mainstream aerospace website that had a whole article about how ooh, we have to be careful not having contact with any aliens because they're going to come here uh, as hostile invaders and this and that. Well, the only people who benefit from that kind of fear mindset are the people who are making hundreds and hundreds of billions of dollars off of Star Wars weaponizing space and convincing people of a threat that doesn't exist. And I keep getting back to this point that Werner Von Braun and others have said, mm -hmm. that this was what part of the big overarching agenda was that got hatched mm -hmm. in the 1950s. Let's create an alien threat and hoax it because that would be the big trump card to play once we've run out of enemies on the planet. And they're just they're getting to the point where they are running out of enemies. And, well, it's uh, laughable because you know we, yeah. the United States is spending nearly a trillion dollars a year. It's insane. And and and, and we're fighting wh who exactly? You know, a handful. You know, there's seventy, and the CIA director Liam Panetta said there's maybe seventy Al Qaeda in Afghanistan. Well, there. Um, we have we have birds in the sky that can 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 read your license plate and more from space. 
Yeah. Any yeah. organized terrorist camp that could be formed, we can send a drone in there and take it out, which is what Biden suggests. But instead, we're over there with hundreds of thousands of troops at the cost of $1 million a year per troop. This is from the uh, Defense Analysis Group, that there is literally costing us $1 million per year per troop we have over in the Middle East. Now, who is benefiting from this? Maybe Halliburton that's selling the gasoline for $150 a gallon? So I, I think that, that people have got to realize that there is an enormous power and lucrative financial arrangements that come yep. through selling this fear and the UFO subculture and I hate to say it, the New Age community by association, has <laughs> taken this bait hook, line and sinker and they're going to have to realize that this has been an enormous mistake um, and we have to back off of it. Um, so I think that we're going to have to realize that you know, uh, fear is the mind killer and we need Absolutely. to come together spiritually and make peaceful contact and we can do that, and that's what we're trying. The reason I spend still four or five weeks a year doing this, and um, uh, we have a schedule up at csetti.org. I don't have it here in front of me um, for the, the, the events we're going to be having where people can spend a week with us, with our entire senior team, by the way. It's not just me, but it's oh. a, seven or eight people who have been doing this for uh, more than a decade. And we're going to be even doing it in England in July. We're going to go over there in the crop circles, and we'll be with uh, people, uh, a small group, and we'll be making contact. And, you know, that's where we had the uh, extraterrestrial vehicle land in 1992, oh. the 100-foot diameter disc that was hovering right above the field. And, and you know, these are things that are life-transforming experiences. Oh. Yeah, for yeah. people to participate in, and some of them are these week-long events, and we're going to do a few of the shorter ones, like the one that's coming up in Orange County uh, in February, and um, uh, it's going to be out near Irvine, and we have actually reserved a, a state park and a lake that we'll have just for our group uh, for October, um, I mean, February 18th, 19th, and 20th, and... Um, so the uh, Marco Island one will be a full week, though, and that's in March of 6th through 12th. And the information for that, like I said, is at CSETI.org. But people, when they learn how to do these events, uh, and, and for, they can form their own team. And this is what's happened. We have a group up near outside Montreal that formed. They came to one of these weekend events a couple years ago, and they've been going out. They have literally had craft appear over their group. They, had a, they have had uh, amazing contact events, uh, very personal, with their group, and it's been wonderful. And I have to say, for you know, a lot of people say, oh, I'd be afraid. I said, look, you might be afraid of the, pe the humans in the military, right. but, but the right. ETs, I said, these are extremely enlightened, compassionate beings because if you are traveling faster than the speed of light, and you're communicating using thought and consciousness and, and the electronics that interface with thought and uh, consciousness, uh. which is what they have, you, you're at a point where you really are understanding the heart of compassion, and that is that, there, that consciousness and mind, each of us are awake through the same light of the single great being. Wow. And, and this is something you can't escape if you reach that level of, of awareness and that level of, of, of where, where basically mysticism meets science, uh, where consciousness and the science of consciousness meets the physics of transdimensional communications and transportation. And so that's where our civilization is heading, uh, you know, in yeah. fits and starts. But that's the, the ETs that are here are all of the, those kind of beings. I mean, all of our experiences now for 20 years we've been doing this have been just the most wonderful, positive, beautiful. Uh, I mean, these are beings that are of enormous uh, enlightenment and God consciousness, and um, they're just, it's just an amazing experience. And it's so opposite from what you see in the videos and movies and TVs on the subject. Oh, absolutely. Um, can you share something that... Um since so many people in your groups have had contact, uh, what uh, what do they? What is the form of communication? I mean, what are they saying to us that we uh, we would want to know about? Can you share anything that they're commu trying to communicate to us? Well, you know, the whole I think with the last chapter in this new book, uh, Contact Countdown: The Transformation, the one that has a DVD that has all the images of our oh, contact, that sounds great. Um, actually has a whole chapter of what these messages have been. Oh, but good. It, it's very, it's very, very clear that it's about um, the future, uh, about 
they're wanting to have a relationship with us when we're peaceful right. about the urgency right. of transforming the situation. Um, and there, there's, you know, it's clear, and even by their actions, I mean, we're, deeds are, are always stronger than, than anything else. Uh, we have seen that they are very concerned, for example, with the environment, um, hmm. we have we have documented and actually seen on our team, uh, and the French government, for example, has documented this, where there have been ET craft that are taking uh, plant samples and soil samples and animal samples because they're very concerned about the amount of radiation and pollution that's damaging the well, biosphere. Yeah, so that's over. that's one of their concerns because um, so that is that is a specific area of concern. Uh, and a very big area of concern is the fact that we're weaponizing space and that we have taken yes. some of these really advanced electronic uh, systems. It's not like it's a missile or an old-fashioned, you know, laser-type thing. These are what are called oh, scalar sure. longitudinal, kind of like that spiral over Norway, which was one of our tests. Uh, we were testing one of these weapon oh. systems. Um, that was actually a shot across the bow for Obama pretty much when he was getting his Nobel Peace Prize in, in, in last November. Wow. Oh, yeah, that, we know that's what it was. I was told about it a week before it happened um, huh. by the people in the intelligence community that I, that I have access to. Well, they would and, turn this into a Death Star, wouldn't they? Yeah, of course, and they have, and this is the one of the real problems is that when extraterrestrial vehicles materialize in the linear space-time, we have space-based weapons that are part of this classified system yep, that yep. pick those up and target them. Yep. In fact, I have a man, one of the Disclosure Project witnesses, back in 1965, he said they already had platforms and, and systems in space that targeted these objects and wow. successfully were able to hit them. So now that was, of course, 45 years, 46 years ago. So imagine what exists today. And, wow. and, and one of the problems, and this is a huge problem, is when we're making contact, we always communicate to the ETs for them to manifest in any way that's safe and appropriate for that time and place because right. we have had craft fully materialize and then right in front of us they dematerialize instantly and then shortly thereafter there'll be an uh, an electron uh, a jet it coming in at a couple oh. hundred feet above us it's a military craft out of Edwards or someplace yeah, that yeah. will be loaded with electronic warfare equipment wow. uh, and so you know we're in a situation where we're we're on the front line of a sort of a unofficial citizen's diplomacy, but it's a serious operation. And then when people come to these events, they're not only going to see, in many cases, the ET manifestations and all the different ways they may manifest around us, whether it be in light or orbs or tones or physical craft or what have you. We have had ETs on the ground with us. Wow. Now, but at the same time, we're going to often we will have jets, we'll have uh, you know we'll have other uh, assets come in that are trying to disrupt the event. So it's a very dynamic thing. It's nothing boring about it. So you know it's like uh, it's awesome. But you know, like these this event we're going to do in Orange County, we're going to spend every afternoon going through all this information and learning the the meditation techniques. Um, I'm actually going to do a puja and teach people a mantra meditation. We're going to go then out into at night, every night for four or five hours under the stars, and we're going to spend that time then actually practicing the protocols and making contact. And uh, we do that every night. So, wow, uh, I'd love that, to do that. Yeah, it's a wonderful <laughs> experience. And we're going to do that. Uh, you know, like I said, we have several events planned for this year. Um, and, Did you ever uh, get up to Northern California? Yes, we're there every year at Mount Shasta up near the Oregon border, okay. and we uh, we're going to be up at Mount Shasta in um, uh, let's see, it's in August twenty eighth through September third of this year at Mount Shasta, and we're going to then be at Joshua Tree in California October thirtieth oh. through November fifth. So um, you know we we do that every year, uh, and those are whole week long events. But this okay. uh, this shorter three day event is in Orange County in Feb in. Um, uh, February 18th, 19th, and 20th, and um, you know, not everyone can take a whole week off to do it. So we're trying to do a, some of these shorter ones, uh -huh. uh, and we may be doing uh, one in Texas and in North Carolina, some shorter ones also this year. So uh, what we're trying to do is is uh, get as many people trained, and we're also uh, going to have up at the DisclosureProject.org an entire training program so that people who cannot come to these events. Uh, can actually get the whole training kit and program online 
and have it sent to them, and it will include all of these books and DVDs and meditation CDs and a training manual and all of that, and including all the electronic tones that we've recorded when we've had ET contact oh, and in the crop wow. circles that you can then send out into space over a, a radio and to help make contact. So all that oh, instructional wow. material will be available online at DisclosureProject.org, and soon... In the next month or so, we hope to have an iPhone and iPad app that oh, you can great. download right onto your right onto your iPhone, and it will actually turn the iPhone into something where you can play the tones. You can have my meditations play. Whoa. You will be able to actually turn the iPhone into a magnetometer that picks up the magnetic field flux when an ET craft is approaching. It's wow. so cool. This is the coolest app that will ever be created wow. uh, that's ever been created, and that's going to be coming out pretty soon, oh, too. Wonderful. So. Jeez. If people want notification of these events, by the way, they can go to uh, DisclosureProject.org and um, sign up for our mailing list for free, and we'll just send you out notices when all these things are happening. Well, wonderful. Um, before we have to um, wrap it up and get uh, the information about the various uh, groups that pe- people can get involved with, um, is what do you feel is the most important message or information that you could uh, share with us today before we go. Well, I think the most important information for people to hear is that each person has both the capability and the responsibility to learn about this issue and manifest a new civilization, a transformed mm-hmm. civilization. And they can do it through consciousness, contact, disclosure and supporting getting these energy systems out and that people have this within them. Everything we need to live for the next half a million years on earth without pollution, without poverty, and a state of enlightenment is already on the earth today. What has been lacking is people coming together and the moral leadership to make that the new paradigm. And so if people understand that, it's a message of great hope, really, because it's not like we even have to discover the sciences. They're here already. They're there, right. They're here. And and so so we have to create, we we have to be the vehicle. We have to allow the greater spirit that we could be the vehicle for this knowledge and these sciences and this transformation to happen. And every single person has that capability within them. Well, that's beautiful, and I agree with you totally on that. Um, Stephen, what's the name of your uh, new book that's come out? It's called Contact, Countdown to Transformation. Okay, I want to get that for sure. And then before we go, would you please uh, share your various websites? And you have a sister site, which is the Arrow Project, isn't it? Mm-hmm. No, no, not that one at this that's point. The, 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 do we have... Right. Um, there are three primary websites, uh, cseti.org, cseti.org, right. for the contact um, uh, training programs, um, and then disclosureproject.org that has a lot of the information about all the witnesses, but also has the, uh, pl- the, the, the online store where you can order these books and things. And then there's the orionproject.org, which is the not- nonprofit that's working to uh, put together the, the 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 resources and the people to bring out these new energy and propulsion systems. And uh, that website, the OrionProject.org, has an enormous number of, of research papers and links to uh, scientific papers and historical evidence of all of this. So Wonderful. those those are the three primary sites that people would want to go to. And uh, I, you also have um, you do have been doing a radio show with my uh, friend Maureen Moss over at World Puja, haven't you? Oh yes, yeah, she's wonderful at the World Puja Network. Yeah, I and in fact, Maureen. we d- we do a World Puja show every other week, um, uh-huh. and where we uh, have different people on who are on our team to talk about the experiences we've had in contact or to update people on the Disclosure Project. And and uh, I'm the host of that show, and we do that every um, two weeks. So yeah, people can. Uh, can go to World Fusion Network and find out about that and, and uh, listen to those. Wonderful. Well, Stephen, you are just uh, an amazing person, and I admire everything you're doing. I follow it closely, and I, I thank you for being here on the show, and I encourage everybody to, to follow you know what you've said and, and go to these projects and research them and start taking action. You, uh, your work is really terrific. Well, thank you very much. I really appreciate your help and support. Well, you can come back on the show anytime you want when you have five minutes to spare. 
All right, I appreciate <laughs> so it. Thank busy. you. All right, keep up the great work. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye.